Hello viewers, I am very happy to share this piece of information about the discovery of X-rays and X-ray diffraction by crystals. Actually, the discovery of X-rays was an accident. It was discovered by Ron Jen in the year 1895 while he was working with cathode ray tube. This cathode ray tube had a glass envelope which is fitted with a positive and negative electrode and the air inside the glass envelope was completely evacuated. Rongen covered this tube with a thick black cover. When he applied a very high voltage, suddenly he discovered a material in the tube which was some feet away from this cathode ray tube was fluorescing. I know all of you know what is fluorescence and phosphorescence. Fluorescence is a phenomena in which when light falls on materials, those materials give off some light. So here, suddenly he saw the material which was certain distance away from the cathode ray tube was fluorescing with the green color. He was wondering, no other light, how could this material fluoresces? So he concluded that there must be some invisible rays coming out of this cathode ray tube and making this fluorescent material to give out green light. And these rays are called X-rays or Rongen rays. It was a marvelous discovery. Newspapers and magazines at that period of time started publishing lot of stories about the properties of these X-rays. He confirmed that these X-rays could pass through solid objects and create images of the object on a photographic film. So that way, physicists began to think that crystals could be studied with the help of these X-rays by diffracting these rays by the atoms of the crystals. He received Nobel Prize on 10th December in 1901 for the outstanding discovery of this X-rays and its greatest applications to the mankind. Though he received Nobel Prize, he refused to register for patent right for this discovery because he said all his discoveries and inventions are dedicated to the world at large and not for the individual. So that is the background story of how X-rays were accidentally discovered by Ronche. In today's class, we will learn about how these X-rays could be diffracted using crystals. Max von Law received the Nobel Prize in Physics in the year 1914 for his discovery of the diffraction of X-rays by crystals. Discovering X-rays received a Nobel Prize and Diffracting these X-rays by crystals received Nobel Prize by Max von Law. I hope you are all thrilled to learn about many Nobel Prize one experiments in this course on modern physics. The objective of today's sharing is to discuss the diffraction of X-rays by crystals. The learning outcomes will be that the learners after listening to this short explanation, we'll be able to state the theories put forward in those days regarding the nature of X-rays. Justify the impossibility of X-ray diffraction with a transmission grating. They will be able to explain the crystal as a space grating rather than a plane grating. A plane grating is a two-dimensional object Whereas a crystal can act as a three-dimensional object which could play the same role as the grating. They will be able to draw inferences from the long spot experiment. X-rays. Wilhelm Röntgen, professor of physics, discovered X-rays in 1895 accidentally while testing whether cathode rays could pass through glass. The physical nature of X-rays remained unknown to the scientific community at that period. 
Now, scientists put forward two theories regarding the nature of these rays. The first theory states that X-rays were regarded as made up of high-speed particles like cathode rays, but having a greater penetrating power. According to the second theory, X-rays were treated as electromagnetic waves of extremely high frequency or extremely low wavelength. A number of experiments were performed to test the nature of X-rays, but without any success. We know light waves are electromagnetic waves and they could undergo reflection, refraction, interference, diffraction, etc. We also know from the grating theory that to obtain diffraction pattern, the spacing between the lines drawn on the grating surface should be of the order of magnitude of the wavelength of the light used. For example, when a yellow light of wavelength 5 into 10 power minus 5 centimeter, otherwise 5000 Armstrong unit is passed through a diffraction grating having nearly 6000 lines per centimeter, a diffraction pattern is formed. But X-rays had very short wavelength. X-ray cannot be diffracted by a normal grating. The second theory states that X-rays are electromagnetic in nature. So if they are electromagnetic in nature, it must be having wave nature. So X-rays too must undergo such diffraction in order to prove its wave nature. As X-rays are of an extremely shorter wavelength, yeah, transmission grating having 40 million lines per centimeter can only produce diffraction pattern. So soon scientists believe that X-rays diffraction pattern with the transmission grating is practically impossible because drawing 40 million lines per centimeter on the grating surface is really impossible. So they realized that X-ray diffraction could not be produced by using normal grating. So in 1912, German physicist Law suggested that a crystal which consists of a three-dimensional array of regularly spaced atoms could serve the purpose of a grating. For giving this idea, he too received Nobel Prize. The crystals differ from ordinary diffraction grating in the sense that the diffraction centers in the crystal are in three-dimensional plane. Hence, the crystal acts as a space grating rather than a plane grating. In the lab, you would have seen grating. It's a two-dimensional object. Whereas if you use a crystal, for example, a sodium chloride crystal or zinc sulfide crystal, a piece, it's a three-dimensional object. So the atoms are arranged in three dimensions. So you can say that the crystal could be a space grating. Now law, with the help of a simple experiment, demonstrated that X-rays could be diffracted using simple crystal like sodium chloride, or zinc sulfide. Based on Law's idea, his associates Frederick and Nipping succeeded in diffracting X-rays by passing them through a thin crystal. Law suggested the idea, but other scientists made it possible that X-rays could be diffracted by a crystal. The experimental arrangement is shown here. X-rays from the X-ray tube are rendered into a thin, narrow, fine pencil beam of rays by passing them through slits S1 and S2. The beam then allowed to pass through the crystal. The emergent rays were allowed to fall on a photographic film. A pattern like this is obtained. This diffraction pattern obtained consists of a central spot at O and a series of spots arranged in a definite pattern about O. This symmetrical pattern is known as loss pattern and proves that X-rays are electromagnetic waves because 
you know when you stand in a light your shadow could be seen behind you that means the light rays falling on your body is getting diffracted at the edges of the body and producing the shadow behind us so here also the atoms in the crystal diffract the rays falling and create the images of the atom on the photographic film a simple interpretation of the diffraction pattern was given by w l bragg according to bragg the intense regularly spaced spots on the photographic plate are produced due to the reflections of some of the incident x rays from the various sets of parallel crystal planes which contain large number of atoms here i have shown a two dimensional crystal but you can imagine a three dimensional crystal you can imagine some planes suppose if you take a plane in three, three dimensional space this plane consists of very few atoms you can imagine a plane in a vertical direction you can imagine a plane in the crystal in the horizontal direction or you can imagine a plane in the inclined plane also if you compare this two dimensional figure you can see this plane is having more number of atoms so bragg suggested that the pattern which we got on the photographic film could be the reflection made by the planes in the crystal which are very rich in atoms these reflected rays that are in phase will combine and produce this law pattern the law spot experiment has established two important facts x rays are electromagnetic waves of extremely shorter wavelength how could this be predicted only light rays can cause shadows now x rays have caused shadows of atoms on the photographic film so x rays also similar to light rays that means electromagnetic rays and how could the short wavelength nature could be predicted a crystal is producing this diffraction pattern the space between the atoms in the crystal is very 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 small diffraction pattern to be produced by a grating the spacing should be of the order of the light incident on it the same thought is extended over the crystal also if x rays should be diffracted by the crystal then the spacing between the atoms should be of the order of the wavelength of the x rays so the spacing between the atoms in a crystal is extremely small so they assumed x rays also must be having very short wavelength and having electromagnetic in nature and the second inference is that the atoms in the crystals are arranged in a regular fashion in three dimensional lattice so even crystal structure could be predicted so crystal is used to diffract x rays and this x ray diffraction produced a pattern on the photographic film reveals that atoms are arranged in a fine manner at the regular intervals in a three dimensional lattice these are the two great findings and law was awarded nobel prize in 1914 for this discovery what is this discovery crystals could diffract x rays so very beautiful x rays were discovered by rontgen and law suggested that these x rays could be diffracted by crystal and then bragg gave explanation and he used these x rays to study the structure of the crystals i hope the short talk would be very interesting to you and you would have understood about the diffraction of x rays by crystals thank you one and all